Hey everyone, Raj here. I hope all of you are well. Today I am back with another Sense of the Week video. So if you don't know about this series, go back and check out some of the older videos in this series. Go to my channel, click on playlists, click on Sense of the Week and you will see a few videos that I've done in the past. The concept is really straightforward. I show you all the fragrances that I have been wearing this week, Monday to Sunday. And I think it, I think, um, I kind of like doing this video because, and I like, I know that there are a couple of other YouTube reviewers who do something similar. It's cool to see what people are wearing during the week, like a little bit of an insight, what people are testing, whether it's new stuff or just wearing their um, their favorites, their full bottles. This week for me has been all samples and decants. So a while ago I did a uh, fragrances for spring video. And in that video, those were the fragrances that I do wear a lot in spring or plan to wear a lot in spring, but it's they aren't the only fragrances. I'm always testing new stuff and the variety and the newness keeps this whole interest really fresh and really interesting for me. So as usual, the names of these fragrances are in the description box along with the timeline. Let's start with Monday. Monday was, it was an okay start to the week in terms of like fragrances. Um, a house that I do like, this one didn't really do it for me. I need to test it a little bit more, but this is from the house of Aqua de Parma. And this one is Colonia Club. So it comes in this, comes like this. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. It's a uh, fresh, minty, uh, fougere, herbal, citrusy. Nothing really shines for me. It doesn't really stand out. I don't think it smells bad, I just don't think it smells great, but I still need to test it a little bit more. It does feel like a spring-summer kind of thing. Um, I think the time to wear this would be like you're going into a business meeting, you're going into a interview maybe. It kind of does work in that formal scenario, it just doesn't really capture my imagination. It's a good fragrance. I think a lot of people who aren't like crazy into fragrances, who don't have like high expectations and maybe over the top expectations like somebody like me or other people in this whole uh, in this whole fragrance community but if you're kind of casual about fragrances definitely worth checking out uh, it is a good scent nothing great though going on to Tuesday so things picked up um, picked up quite well actually on Tuesday I wore again a, a completely new fragrance to me uh, this fragrance actually has been at, around for a while from the house of Aqua de Gio uh, sorry, from the house of Giorgio Armani, but uh, it is quite famous. This is Aqua de Gio Profumo. So this is a, a interpret kind of like a, I don't want to say darker interpretation, but a slightly more earthier, a bit more oomph than the original, which is a classic. I mean, it has been around for years and it's popular for a reason. You know, not everyone likes it. I, I, I do often hear this comment about Aqua de Gio that is a boring aquatic, it smells cheap. I like it, you know, and if you like it and your nose appreciates what you're smelling, that's the most important thing. It's good to hear other people's opinions, but your opinion should be the most important one. And I like this fragrance. I like what they've done. It comes in this, like this. No idea why this guy is looking so serious. He just needs to relax. This is a chilled out fragrance for me. Casual, again, you know, I wore it to work, obviously, but... As it does suit that it does suit that environment. It has all the Aqua de Gio notes, but it just has this something earthy in the base. They say incense, but truly, you know, I would be hard pressed to kind of pick out those two individual notes. But it kind of does actually remind me a little bit of Bleu de Chanel, the Eau de Parfum version, which I'm not a fan of. I love the EDT, but Bleu de Chanel EDP. Um, kind of reminds me of this, but I think this is better. I think this is superior. I'm definitely gonna wear this sample right down to the end. I liked it. I thought it was a good, really good scent. Going on to uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, going on to Wednesday, and yeah, again, another great fragrance for me. This is a house that I've worn a few fragrances from recently, from this line. This is the latest one into Hermes's Jardin line. Not sure, here we go. And this one is called Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee. There's the sample. You know, again, this is, I think this one, it was actually Jean-Claude Elena, his 
final fragrance for Hermes. I need to go and check that, but I think that's what I read. It continues. If you know this Jardin line, you kind of have already smelled this before, to be honest. It continues on this watery, fruity, crisp, perfect for summer, so good in casual um, scenarios. Has a good performance on it, actually, as well. Projection is not huge, but smelled really pure and natural and authentic to my nose. I mean, presumably, there are lots of synthetic notes in here, but it smelled authentic to me. It kind of smells like you're in some sort of big greenhouse um, and you've got these uh, lily pads on on this on the water you've got fresh flowers and green herbal plants and all that kind of stuff in the environment and it's really good it's it's, a, it's an excellent fragrance so going on to Thursday now Thursday was another pretty good day in terms of fragrances and I have two of these samples. I've actually, yeah, I've actually finished this one from the house of Ralph Lauren. This one is called Supreme Oud. Supreme Oud. So guys, bear in mind that I wore this to work. So I think that maybe should be able to tell you something in this. This is a... The, I, I, I am really impressed with this fragrance. I like it a lot. You know, some people will say designer oud fragrances, they don't know what they're doing, and I kind of agree to that to an extent. But it's a difficult note to try and bring to the mainstream because it can be quite harsh, it can be quite smoky, can actually be very, very sweet and quite resinous and really luxurious. But I think Ralph Lauren have taken a, an oud note, which is actually there, I definitely, definitely pick up on an oud note in the opening half an hour because I have smelled real oud oil um, and it remind this fragrance reminded me of that but it then turns into something very sweet and woody nothing over the top, nothing like, I'm not talking like bubblegum sweetness like maybe a polo red or polo red intense nothing like that, just really sophisticated I really thoroughly enjoyed wearing this fragrance. I've, I've done with this sample. I'm gonna go on to my second one and, and probably test that and then do a review. Um, yeah, I, I really like that fragrance and I hear good things about Supreme Leather as well. So this this one is not a dominant oud fragrance, but um, it definitely packs a punch. So going on to Thursday, well no, hang on. I'm completely losing track. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Going on to Friday. Uh, okay, so going on to Friday, this was actually another oud fragrance, but a more fresher one. Um, this is from, I won't do a close-up because you probably won't see, but actually you might be able to, there you go, Joe Malone. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know if you're picking up this up, but this is oud and bergamot. Oud and bergamot, that's a, for me a really unique concept because you've got this resinous, woody, um, ingredient with bergamot which is very very fresh and lively and also what I get with this fragrance is if you know this house and you have smelt pomegranate noir which kind of reminds me a little bit of Amouage's Jubilation 25 for men it kind of gives me that feeling I really like what Joan Malone have done here but the problem and the problem I find with a lot of Joan Malone fragrances is performance this one wasn't even one of those fragrances that I could kind of pick up. It wasn't really there. It, it had gone after like four or five hours. I know I was at my desk and you know, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people do this. You're like, you're, you're wearing a shirt or a jumper and you're kind of like trying to like, can I smell this fragrance? Like, where is it? It had, it had gone. And that's really disappointing for me because I don't carry fragrances at work. I don't really respray. So again, I, I like I like the scent a lot, but... It left me like, you know, really wanting more. Going on to yesterday. So Saturday during the day, uh, I didn't actually wear anything during the day. I don't know why. I think I just forgot for some reason. But I went out in the evening last night and went into central London. There's a place called, uh, in Piccadilly, basically, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bar there that I've been, I went to actually for the first time. And uh, I wanted something a little bit... Um, sweet but also kind of like a sophisticated type fragrance nothing sugary or nothing like that and I'm not sure how many people know about this fragrance but as you can see there it's called Knightsbridge this is by Robert Piguet 
Robert Piguet actually quite um, an old fragrance house. They've been around for they've been around for a while. Um, I don't know too much about the brand, if I'm perfectly honest. But this one, I just saw it on one of the Facebook groups, and I thought, never smelled it before. I just went for it. I don't always do that, but I just went for it. This is a beautiful fragrance. I'm just going to say at the beginning, this is exclusive to Harrods in London. So I don't know how many people are going to get the chance to smell this, but if you ever do, this is like Christian Dior's Feb Delicieuse from the Privé line, which is centered around Tonka. It's a very, very gourmandish fragrance. It takes that one Tonka note, it's, which is in here, very, very authentic. This is, this is how Tonka bean should smell. And it surrounds it with this creamy sandalwood. Um, I still need to explore this fragrance a little bit more. I've worn it like maybe three or four times. Very, very addictive smell. I like this a lot. Actually, let me just... Um... Yeah, the, to the Tonka bean in here is really... It's quite fresh, actually. It's sweet and fresh at the same time. And I feel that some of the, the way that Tonka bean is used in mainstream fragrances is not very actually authentic. It's there, you feel it. But this is this Dior's Feb Delicieuse. Guerlain's Tonka Imperial to a slightly lesser extent is a really excellent representation of what a Tonka fragrance um, is. And obviously there's the new Thierry Mugler's uh, Pure Tonka, which I haven't smelled yet, but um, need, to, need to try that one. Okay, so today, Sunday. Uh, today, um, you know, Sunday is like, was quite a chill that day for me. Started off the day with a, a workout at home, which was good, good start to the day. Uh, watched the Arsenal match, not so good. Met my parents, they were in London. So they came down, we went, for, we went for lunch and we went to meet my grandmother afterwards. And I decided to go with this, so here we go. So Roger Parfum. And this one, so this is the basically the travel atomizer. This is how it looks. And this one is Danger Eau de Parfum Pour Homme. I actually got this for free. And uh, who can say no to free stuff, right? Because I got an email from the Burlington Arcade Roger Parfum store. So there is a, a proper store, like you can walk in and it's a proper store in the Burlington Arcade in London. I believe it's the only uh, Roger Parfum boutique in the world. I got invited there because I was on their mailing list and they said, try out some of the new fragrances we have and get a free um, a free one of these. It, I think it was um, National Fragrance Day. Or so. I didn't, didn't, don't know really much about that, but that was the day. And uh, yeah, so I got this and it's cool. I, I, I like the presentation, you know, quite straightforward, you know, easy to use. Danger is, um, it's really nice. It's nothing spectacular, but it is a good fragrance. It is like lavender and kind of like an oak mossy leathery feel. Um, it's been done before uh, by Guerlain, actually. Heritage is very similar. Like, to be honest, it's, it's so similar to the point where uh, I don't feel that there's much need to buy this. Obviously, this is the EDP version. There is a Parfum strength, which is a higher concentration. But I really enjoyed wearing this. I can smell it on me now. It smells am it, it smells amazing. I'll be honest with you. It really, really is a classy men's fragrance. I can only picture this wear on somebody who is a kind of like a gentleman, you know, subtle tailoring, uh, nothing too loud, but well-made stuff. Definitely, uh, price tag is an issue, obviously, but uh, that that is the brand. So yeah, it was a it was it was a good week actually. Thinking about it now, it was actually it's always great to try new stuff. And as always, over to you guys. What have you been wearing this week? I always love hearing and seeing your comments. You know, you li everyone like puts down the a list of all their fragrances or what was your favorite one that you wore this week. It's always great to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, feel free to hit the like button here and on my Facebook page. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.